Today I rode out of Kiev to Irpin with the intention of going and visiting a friend of mine. By the time I got there, the front line had moved and at that point he was in occupied territory of the Russians, temporarily. Uh, nonetheless, it was not possible to visit him. <laughs> and I was trying to get through, but I got so cold that I got taken in by these babushkas and um, they gave me some soup and a blanket. It was nighttime, there's a curfew, and so I headed to the bunker where I met John. Yeah. So um, anyways, I'm here with John. You were in the Marines, so mm -hmm. you're a disabled vet now. You decided to come over to Ukraine to defend freedom. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like my 1776, you know, you know, in a thousand years, you know, who's going to say that, you know, they were one of the founding fathers of Ukraine. Who gets to say that? Like, really, who gets to say that, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, we're just all here doing our part, you know, and, uh, you know, whether America gets involved or not, I just want everybody to know that, you know, there, there are real people out here, real families, and we're fighting as hard as we can, you know, for each other. You know, just like in just like in the states, if anything was ever go down, we just we grab our rifles and we go to work, and that's what we do here. Here's my bike, and this is the door to the shelter. Um, it closed today at exactly 2,800 hours or 8 p.m., and um, that's okay with me because um, Igor is there. Um, hey. <laughs> Good job, thank you. And then uh, I'm here. And then um, John, uh, disabled vet, Marine, is here. Yeah, some people are moving out. A lot of people are staying. There's a lot more people in these apartments than you realize. Staying strong, armed, and um, ready. But uh, what a scene. Wow. Um, John, I don't know where he went uh, at MIA this morning. I already missed that guy. So we spent the evening basically um, talking about the war and other wars and um, sovereignty and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. So... Um, didn't get a lot of sleep, but a uh, very interesting guy and uh, very interesting um, intel, stuff that's going on here, holy shit. So, anyway, more Americans here than you realize. I don't know, I don't think that's by coincidence. Well, all right, um, I better uh, get on my way. What a crazy view, some, some <laughs> totally crazy American is cycling in his, on his fancy expensive bike around the front line, or how, how to understand it? Well, I am Ukrainian, my mom's 100%, so, I see, yeah, I see. so it's, you know, um, and uh, I, I came over delivery of humanitarian aid, so, uh, I see, yes. yeah, because it looks a bit insane, oh, oh, oh. yeah, you, I appreciate your, you're, you're sport, but <laughs> it's a bit dangerous, isn't it? 5.5 clicks away from here is the front line, is like where? Yeah, it's the last position of uh, the like Ukrainian forces. There is a small Irpin river. There is a like small suburb of Irpin on the other side Irpin, of, the, yeah. of, of this side of the river. Okay. And like Russians are trying to take it because it's like this is the beginning of Kiev, right? Irping is another city, so this is that's the last outpost before Kiev. And if yeah. they approach, if they come here, it means the fighting is in Kiev. I see. It means it's in. Holy fuck! You hear that? You heard it here first, man.
And what does this mean? Uh, Russian military ship, go fuck yourself.